matter to you or your life in five years, don't take it so seriously now. Do your job, but just put it in perspective. The other thing he always said is take the high road. So you're fighting, you're having bureaucratic you know, debates, you're arguing about something. Don't, don't you know, get down into something that you don't need to get into. Take the high road. So I will always remember those. Based on Harry's, Ambassador Thomas's experiences in irregular warfare and strategy, um, two CISA curricular hallmarks, we will hear his thoughts on questions such as, does the US have an adequate strategy to deal with great power competition? What's the role of IW, irregular warfare, in great power competition? And what, are the importance, what is the importance of international partners? We have many of you here today, and Harry's job in SOCOM is to work with international partners as well as his many decades of working uh, to build partnerships and to build partnerships that help all of our national security goals. I would like to thank Dr. Sean McFate for moderating this discussion. Now I will turn it over and welcome Nicole Otala to introduce Ambassador Thomas. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, staff, faculty, at, and guests, and students, it's an honor for me to present Ambassador K. Harry T Thomas, Jr. He is a senior fellow at Yale's University Jackson Institute for Global Affairs and a senior strategic engagement leader at the Special Operations Command. As Ambassador Holtz mentioned, he is a legend in the department, a three-time ambassador uh, in Zimbabwe, the Philippines, and Bangladesh. He also served as Director General of the Foreign Service and Director of Human Resource, that's overseeing all of, this, all of the personnel in the Department of State. He also served as Special Assistant to the Secretary and Executive Secretary of the Department, which is overseeing basically all the workings of the, the department itself. In the role of Executive Secretary in 2006, he led a task force that coordinated the safe evacuation of 15,000 Americans from Lebanon during the confrontation between Israel and Lebanon at that time, which we've recently heard Dr. McVeigh talk about. And he retired in March of 2018 with the rank of career minister, the highest rank that can be achieved in the Department of State, and which only a few have. It's a pleasure to introduce Ambassador Thomas. So Ambassador Thomas, welcome Thank to the you. College of International Security Affairs. We have, um, it, you've traveled from Florida to be here, so thank you. Um, this is an off the record Chatham House rule discussion. We have um, some alumni and others watching, um, but it is a Chatham House rule. You've had a long and distinguished career, 30 years, three ambassadorships. You retired in 2018, mm -hmm. but you semi-retired. A lot of the students you see in front of you come from multiple countries. They have got 15 to 20 years in. Mm -hmm. What is some advice that you wish somebody had told you when you had 15 to 20 years in? Well, doctor, thank you for that question. And again, Ambassador Holtz, thank you for inviting me today. It's wonderful. Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope you're enjoying your time in Washington. Uh, I think what I would have wished I had done more was take more vacation time, uh, more rest, and found something crazy that I was passionate about totally out of the State Department to give me a diversion because you never rest enough. Uh, when you're in these jobs, and pretty soon it's gone. You know, you're, it's over. Um, it's good, and I think it's good, especially for those of you, which I assume it's all, who are going to be in leadership positions, to have something that's a diversion. That way you don't drive your staff crazy. You don't do drive-by taskings for your staff. You, don't, you, you let them breathe, because if you're not breathing, Believe me, they're not. We've all worked for people. If they're, if they're working 24-7, you, you're working harder than that. So it's, and it preserves them, lets them rest, which they need in crises, because you, you overwork people at that time. Now, one of the questions that's mm -hmm. on everybody's mind here, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to ask this, but everybody's, we're watching the events of mm -hmm. Ukraine. I know you're not a Ukraine expert. <laughs> But you are, you have expertise in strategic mm -hmm. thought mm -hmm. and policies. Mm -hmm. If POTUS asks you to come 
to the mm-hmm. Oval <laughs> and said, you know, Harry, given your experience, yeah. what kind of things should we be doing mm-hmm. going forward? What types of policy strategies you know, partnerships, diplomacy, what, what, would you, what would your counsel be? It'd have to be quick, doctor. Uh, when I worked at the White House, you'd, you'd be invited to the Oval. Uh, Dr. Rice would say, Call, come, come down. And she'd, she'd take you down into the Oval, and she was great. She'd say, Mr. President, you remember Harry, because you can't expect him to remember your name. You know? And uh, this was after 9-11 when I was doing South Asia. I was in there a lot. And sometimes you get to sit, sometimes you have to stand, but it always have to be quick. So, so many things are on the president's mind. So it made me focus my, uh, my talking points. So if, there, if it were about uh, Ukraine, I, of course, where I'm not an expert, my, my colleague, uh, Chief Morales knows much more about the military and response. I would say uh, broaden your, your allies and partners. I think Secretary Blinken and the President have done an excellent job uh, with the, the EU, the NATO countries, and, and the UK. Uh, but that's not the whole world. And you're going to need uh, oil, gas supplies in the whole world. We're going to have to help other countries uh, because there's going to be a, a serious possibility of food shortage coming out of what's going on. So what, this is a time to work with other countries to see if maybe some of them could become alternate supply chains for export, uh, not just re- recipient. Who needs, who, who can help uh, United States, uh, South American countries in replacing wheat. Uh, But I would try to use it not just for America to do it, but others, alternate supply chain, alternate alternate agriculture. Uh, A lot of countries are uh, clearly are on the fence, not just countries in the developing world, but uh, Israel also, because everybody's in their self-interest. Having somebody like Putin continue to do this is not in anybody's interest. So I would uh, hire someone like Ambassador Holtz to be our special envoy. Don't very hire serious. Ambassador Holtz. Uh, our taken. special envoy. Send, send some special envoys out to talk and listen. I, I emphasize listen to leaders around the world uh, and see what their interests are and understand if they still want to be on the fence. But how can they help this effort? So, you know, amongst the many things you've done in your career, ambassador to the Philippines, Mm. to Zimbabwe, to Bangladesh, Mm -hmm. uh, you speak, you're a polyglot, Mm -hmm. speak multiple Mm -hmm. uh, languages. Just say you were going to go to, um, you were an ambassador, a special envoy Mm -hmm. to to regions of the world Mm -hmm. who, who, what they may imagine is here, you know, great power competition, Mm -hmm. let's let them gobble each other up. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you go to a country like in sub-Saharan Africa and sort of make the case that, you know, because China's in Africa, Russia's mm-hmm. in Africa, we're in Africa, why should they not play powers off each other? I mean, how do you, how, well, how, what, should, what case can we make? They will, mm-hmm. and we have to understand that. I personally don't like the term great power competition. Mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, it says it's U.S. and China and everybody else is not going to play. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're already telling them they're subsidiary mm-hmm. or tertiary to your efforts. And I understand that you have to act out of self-interest. So I would say, how can we help you? What are your needs? Mostly right now, uh, how are, it's about their economies. Mm-hmm. Um, it is also about climate change and it's migration. Uh, the Congo River Basin is, uh, right after Amaz- the Amazon, the most important uh, ecological basin we have in the world. Mm-hmm. And with the Amaz- Amazon suffering, Congo River Basin suffering, that's going to affect us. That's leading to more migration. Uh, you have people in, in Central Africa going to South Africa, putting pressure, pressure on, on, on that. So how can we help your economies? How can we help, your, uh, help you with climate change? But first, what do you want us to help you with? 
And if, if it's something we can help you with, we will. If it's something that we can't, we're gonna I, I will tell you. Uh, and let's make it multi-year. And if you think for X thing you're, you're better with the Russians, Y thing you're better with the Chinese, go ahead. I wouldn't waste m money. And uh, uh, leave, it, leave it like that. I don't, uh, it's, it's folly because long term, um, you know, the Russians are gonna send the Wagner group you know, the mercenaries, uh, you've written very much about mercenaries and you see them coming from Syria now, right? And Central African Republic, right. and Mali. And, yes, you've, yeah. you've, you've written about that. So uh, not in ways I imagined a month ago, but right. it's happening, right? So how can we help you prepare for things that are of your importance and leave that? And if, we're, if we are better at, than the Chinese and Russians of that, people will be with us maybe 50 or 60% of the time, and then 40, they're not gonna give them up. If we're not, they'll be with us less. That's the way it works. And we have to understand that. Don't, don't be childish when they, they tell you they're not interested. So one of the interesting things about your career, mm. and I, well, first of all, I'm glad that you brought up a critique of great power competition, mm. the phrase. Um, and you, know, you work with SOCOM now mm -hmm. on leadership. You work with the Jackson, Jackson Institute at mm -hmm. Yale University, mm -hmm. working also with irregular war warriors, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a solid understanding mm -hmm. of not just the diplomatic world, but mm -hmm. the military world and strategic mm -hmm. world. One of the, I want to get your opinion, and this may be, mm -hmm. this is interesting. Half of our federal discretionary budget mm -hmm. goes to just one department, mm -hmm. the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the rest of the interagency get what's, you know, the, the other 48%. Um, and that, of course, gives the, the Department of Defense a very loud voice in the policy room. And this, this phrase, great power competition, originated from the 2018 National Defense Strategy, not the National Security mm -hmm. Strategy. But it's become the sort of national security, mm -hmm. an element of national security strategy. Do you have any concerns about what some critics have seen as the over-militarization of, mil of foreign, American foreign policy? Mm -hmm. What role should the State Department have or mm -hmm. would like to have? And how do we, you know, not to say how do we rebalance it, but what's the, um, what's the pros and the cons mm -hmm. of this situation? Well, I think uh, the military would tell you that uh, over half of their their budget is for personnel also, you know, yeah. as large as it is. And with what's going on in um, Ukraine and Russia, we can't expect the defense budget to be cut, um, <clears throat> even though a, before a few weeks ago it was about to be cut. So I, ex I expect in ways that's not going to happen. And you know, short term arguing against that's a loser. But mm -hmm. long term, we really need to take a look. What, what does DO do best? What does state, what does AID, Millennium Challenge Corporation? Agriculture is extremely important because our largest export is agriculture. We're providing the world with, with food. How, what can we do to that? Commerce, I would like to see more devoted to US trade rep and commerce. I personally was a big fan of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think it was a way not only to bring um, Asian countries, but Latin American countries in the Pacific to help improve their their economy showed that the United States was not a hegemon. I think trade, you know, trade, uh, any kind of trade bill in the short term is, is dead, but find another way to rephrase it and engage these countries uh, on, on their, on trade that, that's, that they could, they could do well. Um, military has a huge uh, civil affairs budget. A lot of that work USAID could do, or they could do jointly. When we were in the Philippines, we had Joint Special Operations Task Force uh, Philippines in the southern part of the Philippines. And AID worked very closely uh, with the soft community because they could come up with ideas. They could come up with it. But because it was dangerous, how do you, how do you implement? How do you maintain? How do you check? So uh, AID had a deputy mm -hmm. in Jesotov. Jesotov's deputy had a, a deputy, a kind of an LNO, mm -hmm. at... Uh, uh, the other office, and we used to work together. Uh, that was when uh, Fran Baudet was a colonel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 06, and then Gus Gustenstein was a, a SEAL. 
And that worked well. So you can find ways, and you don't even have to ask Washington to do it, yeah. uh, rather than railing against the budget. How, how, how best in this particular country can we make this more effective mm -hmm. and more integrated? And uh, I think that's probably the best way to go, other than saying, oh, DOD's budget's too large, our budget's mm -hmm. too small. Nobody wants to hear that in the Hill. They're not going to help you with that. So p to push it, the decisions down to the country team yes, level. Yeah, and, because you can do that. Yeah, and uh, let, yeah. Um, so we have before us thinkers, future leaders who are specializing, it's not a perfect term, in irregular warfare. Mm -hmm. Given the U.S. strategic mm -hmm. shift mm -hmm. towards great power competition, uh, good or bad, what do you think is the irregular war component of great power competition? including what our partners. Yeah, well, you know, I'd love to hear from them and see what they, they think. I, I, you know, in the Philippines, we learned, and we didn't learn, because uh, General Pershing started strategy in the Philippines in 1906 in Mindanao. Uh, 2022, we're still trying there, so something is wrong. In, in irregular strata, uh, warfare, on and off there. And it was, uh, if you look at his plan, he was uh, a, a captain or major then. Uh, it was a hearts and mind campaign, and I, I have never talked to him about it, but I would bet that General Petraeus took a lot of that out of that for Iraq when you look at it. Uh, so why don't hearts and minds campaigns work? Why don't isolation, this is stuff we tried in Vietnam with, with AID and state. Uh, why have they not worked? Clearly, you're not finding ways. It's not just weak governance and corruption where, where there is. The people's hearts and minds are not behind what you're trying to do. So how do you change that, and how do you work with that government of the day, which is off, off, often in a, uh, far away, and though a not rep so you're sending a soldier or sailor, often from a different ethnic group or different religious group, down to this area to run these people. Always a mistake. If you do a local, you're just buying him or renting him. Mm -hmm. And he's happy to be rented, but he's not part of your thing. So what, what, is, what has failed? Are we not educating people? Do they not? They, they're not stupid in local areas. They, they know what's in their interests. They may tell you what you want to hear. So we have over 100 years of failure in the Philippines, working closely with the Philippine government, which is based in Manila, very far, very far away. And I would bet you see that failure uh, in so many places because of, uh, and so in, in that vein, the irregular warfare that they're going to practice is going to fail. 20 years from now, they're going to have other soldiers, sailors, marines, coast guard, uh, trying to do the same application because they have not been able to find a way to really address the grievances of the locals. So it sounds like we've been engaging in a strategy that sort of the definition of um, insanity. Um, do you think that maybe part of the problem is this idea of winning hearts and minds mm -hmm. Briefs well back here, mm -hmm. but on the field is actually quite complex and maybe not feasible. Sure. You just can't come in a neighborhood with military and just <laughs> take it over and think, oh, we're so happy to see you. Right. Uh, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. Do you think it's possible that our military could be trained in culture, local culture, or do you think that's also a bridge too far? No, it's extremely important. Uh, one of the reasons, obviously, I'm from New York City. Greta's from Michigan. We speak different English. We have different culture. I, I lived in Arizona for a couple of years. That was like living in a different world, just culturally. My wife's from the Philippines. So September 1st, they start singing Christmas music, right? So, no, I mean, that's, that's Christmas season. So those instantly to Americans' mind, something's wrong, but it's not wrong. So you have to learn the local culture, the local language, even if it's English, and it's going to take time. The challenge is for America, and maybe not for our foreign allies and partners, your tour is over by the time you've really learned that. And that's going to be, especially for the, uh, 
for, for DOD assigned. Uh, uh, Jasotif will be a one, one year to 18 month assignment. You've learned, now you gotta rotate out. And you, it, it, there's, there's great reasons for that, but that puts it against it. What I would like is what we used to do and Peace Corps does a little bit in the Brits. When you landed in a country, no matter what part of an embassy you were attached to, a military, you live with a local family for three months. Hmm. Uh, and we used to do that. Uh, so you learn, you don't learn everything, but you learn a lot uh, uh, of the, because you've already studied the language. So you learn the idioms, you're learning the culture, what to do, what not to do. You gotta learn the humor, you gotta learn the music, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a start. And I think if the military asked, they'd probably get it a lot sooner than state or <laughs> agriculture. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I would like to see. So for my last question, yeah. before we turn it over to the audience, yeah. um, is that, you know, you've been, you've been doing this for now like 35 mm. years. I had hair. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot's changed. <laughs> yes, it has. Um, so, you know, a lot has changed in that, mm. but looking at the next 35 years, mm. how do you think diplomacy fundamentally will or will not change? Mm. Should there be sort of new ideas mm. or concepts about diplomacy, especially in a world that's increasingly globalized, where it's increasingly, you know, you have Fortune 50 country, mm. companies that wield a lot mm. of international power. You have individuals like Elon Musk who, I mean, how does, how should, what should modern diplomacy look like? Yeah, you know, uh, thanks for that, Doctor. You're right. Musk is trying to play a role in Ukraine. Yes. Right. We have uh, celebrities trying to help Haiti. All these things. I think uh, the great thing is we're going to be more efficient. At State, we used to always brag about what we had to do with so little, but mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I think with uh, technology and, and funding, we'll be much more efficient. However. I think all other countries are coming into technology, right? No matter what form I went to in Zimbabwe or Bangladesh, the guy had a small phone, cell phone, and he was get, getting not only weather, but he was get, doing uh, banking, telebanking, right. all those things. So we, we, those are we're gonna see. But uh, COVID has reminded us of the importance of human interaction. Mm -hmm and building relationships, maintaining those relationships, developing those relationships. And I think you're still going, and I could be wrong, but I think um, our children, our grandchildren are still going to have to have that. Um, you don't get to know somebody over Zoom. Mm -hmm. You get to know them having a cigar with them, a drink, I'm sorry if somebody uh, uh, doesn't smoke or drink. I like cigars. Uh, but, Getting to, you know, getting to know their family, sitting with them, talking with them, just listening. Um, otherwise, and, and, but still understand they're going to act in their self-interest and, and don't be upset when they, when they do. Uh, but you have, to, I, 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 I could be wrong, but I think that what you saw, uh, what Dean Acheson was doing 70 years ago to build relationships uh, in, in Europe is what we're going to have to do around the world now, whether it's large, many Marshall plans, but they've got to be focused. I would like to see them, what I would like to see the State Department have, you know, st uh, DOD has the uh, Space Command now. Mm -hmm. I would like State to have a Futures Command or a Futures mm -hmm. Bureau. I would like to have the Foreign Service officers uh, familiar with the NDS, mm -hmm. uh, NSS. And, and look, what are our future challenges? And that, and, and uh, work with our allies and partners to try to figure that out for them, not just us. Uh, and I think you could get a lot of young, talented people uh, interested in that. The young, talented people that we recruit now, I'm a political officer, you know, we're the princes of the foreign service, but they wanna be public affairs officers. Mm -hmm and you know, communicate with others so, uh, and, and cultural officers. So I, that's what I'd like to see. Interesting. All right, well, thank you. With, with that, let's turn it over to audience.